Have you ever wondered why some roads and trails don't show up on Google Maps, but you can see them on apps like All Trails, Garmin Connect, and Ride GPS? Or how come when you're driving sometimes, Google Maps doesn't recognize a back road? Well, the magic ingredient is OpenStreetMap, or commonly known as OSM, and I'm going to tell you all about it. So here's an example of what I'm talking about. Let's compare the same location in Google Maps and Ride with GPS. If you don't know what Ride with GPS is, it's a common cycling map repository and route builder, similar to Garmin Connect, Komoot, and Strava. Here I have Google Maps open, of course, and this is a park area in Burnaby, which is a suburb of Vancouver, BC, Canada. This is just a simple example, but here as I zoom in on this green space area, it appears that there are no roads, walking paths, or trails present. If I was just limited to Google Maps, I would almost think that this is just a fully forested area that you can't walk or bike in. Now, I have Ride with GPS over here on the same area, and I have it set at the Google Maps layer here. Again, you can see that this whole area appears to have no trails or walking paths. But now let's do a quick switch here to OSM and take a look at what it shows. So I'm changing to the OSM layer and clicking OSM. And look, there is a whole little trail loop here. This trail was not visible on the map until I enabled OSM data to be included. So let me tell you a bit about OSM or OpenStreetMap so you can learn how it works and how it helps outdoor related mapping. So what is OpenStreetMap? Well, OpenStreetMap is a free open geographic database that is updated and maintained by a community of volunteers via open collaboration. Map data is collected by ground survey, personal knowledge, digitizing from imagery, and government data. Somebody like you can go into OSM and manually trace a cool back road or hiking trail that they know exists but don't see it on Google Maps. Then users can view the road or trail in OSM, and additionally, apps that integrate with OSM will then also start displaying the new road or trail that you yourself added in. OSM is built on open source code, which without going into computer science speak, means that any person or organization can edit and modify maps within OSM, and then they will be readily available for the public to use. This is a huge paradigm shift in mapping approach because when OSM was originally created in 2004, basically all mapping data was owned by government organizations and was not readily available for public use. Of course, Google Maps is now the dominant force within GPS map tools, but the difference with Google Maps and OSM is that OSM easily allows any user to edit public maps at home with no technical skills, whereas Google Maps is essentially restricted from editing by the public. Note that there are some nuances to that statement that I will cover later in the video. But regardless, in short, this guy named Steve Coast created OSM in 2004 to try to give mapping tools into the hands of the vast, untrained public instead of keeping it within the hands of the very small number of mapping professionals, which had been the norm in the world since modernity. OSM has since evolved into a mapping tool that covers the earth and has over 10 million users. OSM is also used by massive companies like Facebook, Apple, Craigslist, Strava, and Snapchat. It is also a fundamental enabler of Pokemon Go. Outdoor mapping tools like Garmin and AllTrails rely heavily on OSM data since the networks of trails and back roads that outdoor enthusiasts frequent are not displayed typically within Google Maps. Now let's do a super quick demo of how easy it is to edit maps and add roads and points of interest within OpenStreetMap. So first I gotta zoom in to a close enough point on the map that the system will allow me to edit. So you can see here, the editing is grayed out, but when I zoom in a bit more, will now allow me to edit. This is just a random place, the Alaska Highway that I just zoomed in on. I'm gonna click this edit button. And I do have to zoom in a little bit more. And now this line and point just showed up. So I'm gonna click line and I can start drawing in a line that would act as a road. I'm going to click on this and that kind of indicates a line. So I'm going to make it a minor residential road. And then I'm going to click this point 
put it at the end. And let's call it a motorway. Actually, no, let's call it a crossing with pedestrian signals. So I'm gonna put that there. Now I just added that into the map. And this is, you know, technically now would be available for everyone if I were to hit this publish and this would show up on the map. This obviously doesn't exist. This is not real, um, but yeah, I could click this button here and then it will publish it to the world. So you would actually not want to do what I just did because this is considered an act of vandalism um, because this doesn't, doesn't actually exist. But you know, this is just a demo that I'm trying to show you. So I'm gonna click undo and not publish this out because that's vandalism. Another quick technical note is that this map editor in the browser is not the only way to edit and update OSM as third-party apps can also do this via integration. Any change a user makes in OSM will update the entire database within minutes. Okay, so what are the drawbacks of OSM then? Well, similar to Wikipedia, because any user can edit OSM, it creates the possibility of intentional and unintentional errors. The greatest strength of OSM is the open source contribution feature, but it is also its greatest weakness because it is more susceptible to inaccuracies when compared to a highly scrutinized alternative like Google Maps. OSM has some anti-vandalism processes in place, but the whole system is highly dependent on goodwilled and well-informed users making fixes to inaccurate data. The second downside is that the OSM user interface is not very fancy and is quite clunky to work with. Most outdoor enthusiasts will use an app that utilizes OSM data, and I really like the Ride with GPS UI compared to OSM's. Now I'm going to talk about the cost for a company to display map data from OSM versus Google Maps or another company like Mapbox. This is kind of interesting to think about if you are ever thinking about developing an app or just simply curious about how much Strava and all trails have to pay to utilize mapping data. So as you might've guessed, OpenStreetMap is free to integrate with. Mapbox, on the other hand, charges companies $1 per 1,000 user usages. And as you might guess, Google Maps charges double what Mapbox charges, $2 per usage. This pricing is probably not interesting to most of us who just use these services for free as an end user, but it is interesting to see the value that OSM has created for the marketplace by having this community create the maps themselves and therefore being able to keep the integration costs as free. While OSM usage and data integration is free, there is a legal requirement to display attribution within the map. This has historically not jived well with Google Maps approach to mapping and they only display their own copyright on their own maps. Google Maps has a brand reputation for being highly reliable and accurate. So part of this decision to not use OSM data might just be because the data hasn't been manually validated by Google. However, the downside of Google's approach is that they are missing so many back roads and trails to the extent that all of the outdoor apps have a legitimate product and business when many outdoor maps users would just use Google Maps if they could. Additionally, one interesting tidbit I found on Reddit is that many OSM users have noticed that updates they make to a map in OSM get added in Google Maps a few days or weeks later. There's a debate on Reddit whether this phenomenon is a conspiracy of Google secretly copying data from OSM without attribution, or it's just a case of users taking new map edits within OSM, and then also adding them into Google Maps. Yes, Google does have their own user-based map editing tool that is sort of a copy of OSM. It was launched in 2008, which is four years after OSM launched, but the main difference is Google validates every map edit made by a user, whereas OSM does not. Again, this keeps Google Maps data highly refined and accurate, but it limits the breadth of mapping data details in more off-road parts of the world, like hiking trails. In conclusion, outdoor map tools like Ride with GPS and All Trails depend on open street map data to provide comprehensive mapping data. This means that you, the people of the internet, are contributing to the maps we use for running, cycling, and hiking. So well done, you deserve a thumbs up. And while you're at it, maybe give my video a thumbs up too. I hope you learned something about maps, and until next time, I'm out.